Hello. On behalf of the Centers for Integrative Medicine and Health, I'd like to welcome you to this week's installment of Wellness Wednesday. Wellness Wednesday is designed to bring, in brief format, tools that will benefit our colleagues and our communities at large. And today I'm here with my colleague, Tim Michaels. And actually, Tim chose the topic for this week. He chose the topic, You Are What You Think. So will you start us off, Tim, and tell us why you chose this topic? Well, I chose it for a couple of reasons, but I'm kind of laughing. When we started trying to do this recording, um, I caught myself trying to um, stretch my forehead a certain way so there's less wrinkles. <laughs> okay. Because as soon as I look into the camera, I, I see a very old man who's wrinkled. So I'm trying to fix it. Um, so that's a silly example of, of talking about, you know, you are what you think. So there, there's been enough work done, whether it's uh, positive psychology, traditional psychology. Um, and I want to be clear for everybody, we're not trying to come up with um, happy day statements that aren't authentic. What we are trying to do is catch ourselves when we have a thought process that's going that is not serving us well. So you are what you think is relatively true. The longer I think you are old and wrinkled, the more I'm beginning to believe I'm old and wrinkled. So, you know, it's very interesting. There's some great notions from Don Miguel's work in the Fifth Agreement, where his first agreement is be impeccable with your word. And he really means the way you're talking to yourself, right? Um, and then recently I came across an eight-week course on a website called Daily Ohm, and it's entitled You Are What You Think. And, and we'll include some of these references at the end of it, but what they're really talking about is how do I break that cycle and catch it? You know, there was an, uh, a Buddhist saying is, if you feed the tiger, the tiger will grow. Right. And, and that just really sums it up. So that's why I wanted this one. I have heard from a lot of people in our healthcare environment, whether they were clinical or not, that they have some really um, strong judgmental views of how they've managed the last year mm -hmm. in the direct patient care more times than I would like to remember. I've heard a nurse or a physician say, I wasn't enough. And that is a powerful thought that we keep feeding now for 12 months. But I, I hesitate to say, but it's not true, but it is what we're feeding. So that's why I picked it, Kathy. I think it's such an important topic. And what we're taught in meditation, too, is you are what you think, but you are not your thoughts, which it sounds like splitting hairs. But if you catch yourself going down that road with, oh, I look terrible, I get wrinkles, whatever, and you keep repeating those thoughts, then you buy into them. But we constantly have thoughts that are barraging us with judgment and negative things and some positive things that just come into our heads. That's what our brains do. And so our job is to figure out how to stop the ones that don't serve us, just like you said, and be able to take a break from that and go down a different path that we choose. And so when we start to think those negative thoughts, we need a tool. We need a tool to kind of wake ourselves up and say, okay, my brain is going in that direction, but that's not who I am. Mm. So the other thing I'm often reminded of um, is, is some of our basic biology. So we, we know and can measure that we have an electromagnetic field that comes off our heart, and we know that it emits communication. We can debate about what's going in that field, but since we know it's about three feet in radius around us, as soon as we get close to anybody else, that communication field is occurring. And we also know that the heart develops um, in the womb just as the brain stem and then the brain itself. So that little life is communicating with that mom through the neurites on the heart. So I just find this really fascinating that if I'm walking around all day saying I'm old and wrinkled or I'm not enough, or you know, I've gained the COVID-19, I'm fat, and then we try to put a smile on it, people do feel it. Yeah. Um, and if we want a better experience in the world, then it's the trick of catching those thoughts. And it's really hard because I have to be honest, once you get good at those thoughts, trying to stop them leaves a gap. And in the gap, you'll remember other things you would rather do and think, 
but it's been a long time since we let those in. Yeah, so what's sure. a what's a tip, Kathy, that you could give us that would help us begin practicing today to stop those thoughts? Yeah, that's a really nice tool, and it's called stop. And what you do is you stop, is the S, and you T, take a breath, and you just observe. Part of what we need to do is understand our own thought processes. So if you catch yourself adjusting your camera or whatever to hide the wrinkles, we have to observe like, wow, I wonder why I'm thinking that today. And more as a, uh, an unbiased observer, which again, incredibly challenging, but just look at it and say, I wonder what, why that is today. I wonder what's bugging me today that that's where my thoughts are going. And then proceed, just move on your way. But it's that um, disruption of that sort of rabbit hole thought going down that can then kind of start the upward spiral rather than the downward spiral. It can make a really big difference. But like many things, it's a practice. We have to catch ourselves, we have to stop, we have to take a breath, we have to observe those thoughts, and then we have to proceed in the manner that we want to, that we choose to. So stop, take a breath, observe. And what was P? Proceed, just go on your way. Okay, all right. I'm gonna need a little card from my pocket. Yeah, um, we have one for you actually. Okay, good, because <laughs> I, I got through the first and forgot the P. So I think it's important for anybody listening, it, it sounds simple, but if you catch, the number of times you catch yourself um, thinking even just, I'm tired, I don't wanna to go to work, I don't wanna do this, it really building in that stop can really help shift the experience you're gonna have in the next minute. And, and the other thing too is, is as you do stop and you get better and better at it and you observe, one of the questions I would ask, and Kat, tell me if this could work, when I'm observing, is to ask the question, is this working well for me? Right. Right? Is it working well? So we all kind of get used to doing things, but in this moment, don't go to the past, just in this moment, is this working well for me? Is it working well to think you're an old wrinkled man? And, and the God's honest truth is no, because I still had to make the video and I want it to be authentic. So the thought has to go. So the next authentic one can come up front. So stop, take a breath, observe, proceed. Got it. All right. Thank All right. you so much, Kathy. Oh, thanks, Tim.